Let's go under the hood of the Gaussian and take another look at this because this is important. The beam radius, the spot size, let me go ahead and use my red pin on this again, is given by W of Z. This essentially says how the beam changes as a function of the Z direction. So let's make sure we're clear that that's the Z direction. This point right here where the beam has its minimum size is Z equals zero. And this is where we define W naught right there. As we propagate along Z, the term W of Z essentially says how the radius of the beam changes as Z changes. And the solution of our equation is going to look like a Gaussian, and it's going to look something like that. Let me get rid of that. I certainly don't need that. It's going to look kind of like that. And essentially what it's saying is this point, which happens to be the 1 over amplitude, is defined to be W naught, and that increases as we go along the beam. The radius of curvature um, is essentially the radius r of a sphere. Get rid of that. Or how much the beam front is curved. So you'll see that r of z is infinity at z equals zero um, and goes to be larger and larger numbers essentially as r increases. Um, and this is actually very important but let's go ahead and, and look at this. It says, near the laser, we have plane waves that are spatially confined, and they go basically in a straight line, like a pencil beam, the way you'd expect a laser to be. But as we get further and further away, they go from being plane waves to being spherical waves. And out here, very far away from our laser, this is the type of wave we'd expect from a point source. And that certainly makes a lot of sense, because if you get far enough away from your laser, it is going to look like a point source. Any emitter of radiation looks like a point source if you get far enough away. And this R of Z describes this. Uh, the term Z naught, essentially, that we've seen in all these equations, we have our Z naught appearing here and our Z naught appearing here, essentially says, what's the distance from the source, from Z equals zero it takes, for the plane waves to turn into spherical waves? And it's also the place, and so we look at our distance, z naught there, it's also the place where the beam goes from basically going in a straight line, like a pencil, to spreading out. Um, and so if you think about this, it's kind of like the Bode plot turning point. It goes straight there and expands at the angle theta that we calculated um, when we were doing uncertainty earlier. Now let's take a look because this is an awful lot of mathematics and we're going to spend some time on it. So if you're not feeling comfortable with this yet, don't worry about it. But let's take a look at, at some uh, laser beams or Gaussian beams that I calculated using MATLAB. Uh, we're going to look at three components. We're going to look at the real part of the electric field, the magnitude electric field, and the magnitude squared, which is proportional to the intensity. And let's first of all look one meter away from our laser. Um, essentially what we see is over a range of four centimeters, so this goes from zero to four centimeters and four centimeters that way, so we're looking at an eight by eight centimeter grid, uh, one meter away. We see the real part of the electric field uh, looks kind of like what we'd expect. It looks like a Gaussian function and our laser beam looks there. The real part and the magnitudes look pretty much identical and it's hard to see because the, I had to shrink things down a lot to get all the figures to fit, but the intensity is smaller than the electric field because it's proportional to E squared. And if you have, have a function that looks like this, right, and then you go ahead and you square it, and let's get a different ink color, um, the smaller numbers get smaller, the bigger numbers get bigger, and squares of things, especially Gaussian curves like this, tend to make them more peaked, and so we would expect the square to be smaller. A hundred meters away, or about the, a little further than a football field, uh, we start to see that the real part, which is going to contain phase, actually start to have some ripples in it. This is what the, the actual electric field looks like. If you look at the magnitude of the electric field, you see this very traditional Gaussian shape. It goes down like that. This is the kind of curve we call, call a Gaussian, um, and is in fact described by e to the minus r squared over w of z squared, and this 1 over e point right here 
gives w of z. Oops. Um, and you also see again that the intensity profile is smaller than the magnitude of the field. And if we go out to 300 meters where our beam really starts expanding, you can see that we get a lot more oscillations in phase in the real part. Um, now our beam is getting bigger than our 8 by 8 centimeter grid. And this is what it looks like. So our beam, 300 meters away from our laser, is really starting to expand. And the parameters I used to calculate this were the wavelength of 500 nanometers, which is a kind of a blue-green color, and a initial beam radius of 2 millimeters. So the diameter of the laser beam is about 4 millimeters. And you can see for this color and this size of a beam, you've really got to go out to hundreds of meters away before the laser starts to expand, which is honestly why lasers are so good for targeting sites and getting energy in a small area. And we're going to spend a couple more days going over Gaussian beams, but hopefully this has clarified some of the derivation for you. And you need to go off and read on your own uh, that derivation and try to understand it. And we'll spend next time looking at this information again, having a second view of it, and maybe making it a little bit more